Hey, and welcome back to Gunners TV. Now, I wasn't going to make a video until after the weekend, but this new story, I'm sure you're, you're going to know what we're going to talk about by the headlines, but I just had to talk about it. Why not? And I had to have one of these on the go just to help me get through it. Look, as Arsenal Football Club, we are not the only ones in trouble on and off the field. We don't have we we don't have we're not the only ones with idiots running our football club. We're not the only ones with bad owners. Take now La Liga's wage structure and all that. It's completely different from the Premier League, yeah. I'd have to look into it instinctively to, to, to notice the difference. We'll see if there's some sort of wage cap. I, I, don't, I, I don't really know what is going on in La Liga. You know, you think they'd have brought it in years ago. But maybe they've always had a, a strict wage structure and they broke it recently. You know, my my, my, my one was when I found out when, Kill, when Anton Gwynes ran was on 700 large a week 700 bags a week 700,000 bags a week Anton Griezmann there you go there's another check Mr Griezmann 700,000 pounds a week for doing fuck all now Lionel Messi agreed to cut his wage wages in half which he did now, there's been some sort of other falling out between the two clubs. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure of the ins and outs. I think, you know, what the press release and what's really going on behind the scenes, you'll never know to Lionel Messi um, writes a book about it all. When he's well and truly, when he, <clears throat> he is well and truly retired, because you've got to remember, there is one thing that is dead in today's game that I always thought Lionel Messi would break the mold of the modern day superstar, a one man club. Back in the day of when I was growing up, it was common to have a one a one man club. Then the Premier League came along and broke that mould. Broke that mould. Especially when people like Mourinho came in, broke that mould. Fergie broke that mould, you know. Big teams in England started breaking that mould. They started, they started pinching predominantly Arsenal's best players. And then we were known as the selling club. <clears throat> Now, for me, Messi's 34. His pace is theoretically gone, even though I still think he has a burst of pace in him. Now, when you look at the lineup he could have around him in the PSG team, Kylian Mbappe. Yeah? There's one name that strikes fear into, the, into everybody in world football. Yeah, Di Maria, Argentinian international, Verratti, Neymar. I could just go on and on and on and on. Dumaruma, Italian number one who uh, broke English hearts. They have. If PSG don't, they nail Messi, Messi which isn't a foregone conclusion, by the way, but. It's looking that way. If they don't nail Messi this summer, then you know they never ever have a better chance of getting the world's best player. He's not just been the world's best player for a number of years now. He's been the world's best player ever since the rivalry began. I was always a Ronaldo boy because he was around before Messi. <clears throat> because I always thought Ronaldo had slightly more to his game in his head and ability. Uh, his set piece taken but 
come on, man. The older Messi got his dribbling ability, his the way his the ball was just glued to his feet as he ran through players was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And um I think La Liga in, in France will suit Messi's game down to a ground it's slower. I don't think Messi wants to come to the Premier League maybe for reasons like he didn't want he wouldn't want to be embarrassed. But if I was Messi, I'd have something like this in my contract. I pay play like heart fifteen to seventeen games in the Premier League max. That's in my contract. I'm only playing in the big games if you want me there, boss. Yeah? Even if other players deserve it, it's in my contract. Yeah? And I'm sure other players would be due arrest. And obviously, I'm in the Champions League team. Squad, at least. Yeah? I think that that would work. That would work. Um, does Messi really want to play? You know, they're the French runners up, so they're in the Champions League. They've got to play all, what, 30 odd games in La Liga. They've got all the French Cups. He's going to have to play a damn lot more football in France than he would in England. If them terms were agreed to, I still think a move to the Premier League would cement him as umo numero because that's what that's the one thing Ronaldo has done and successfully done. Let's be fair, Ronaldo, Ronaldo only had, really had one, one and a half, two good seasons tops. He definitely had one good season. Yeah, so Messi can at least match that. Yeah, and possibly lift the Champions League at the same time and a league trophy. So, I think Messi could match that. I just don't see why Messi wouldn't want to come to the Premier League. But Argentinian coach as well in Poch. What a, what a coup for Paris Saint-Germain. What a mess for Barca. We think Arsenal are in a mess. At least we've got money. I might not spend it, but we've got money. I mean, if I, if I was a Barcelona fan now, I, I would be in, I'd be distraught. And, you know, even though Barcelona have been bullies every year in the transfer market, but that's how you get your best players. My heart full goes out to Barcelona fans, man, for your club being craply run by your owners and your and the people who run your run the wage structure and knows the laws of the old land. So this goes out to all Barcelona fans, man. You know, I feel for you, man. Um It kill it in France. It it absolutely kill it in France. Um and yeah. It's just mind boggling. My mind mind boggling. Absolutely mind boggling. <clears throat> but back to things on the home front. I think a great signing for Arsenal would be Bernardo Silva. Whether we can get him or not. I think my would you know, I'm looking back at older teams, like, even when you main man, like, say, Bamiyang ain't firing all cylinders, right? We've got a lot of dead wood around that we can't get rid of right now, yeah? Let's not give them new contracts, like, hecky becky, yeah? Let's just keep hold of him for now. Let him go in January. Let him go when some team's desperate for a right back in January. We can sell them, then. Right, because there's sure to be clubs around who's desperate for right backs in January. Right? I just think Ars this is where Arsenal need to play it clever. But we need a Bernardo Silva. We need a Martin Oldegaard. Yeah? Two left footers. Yeah, 
Old regards more of a sitting number 10. Can play a bit deeper in number 8 role. Bernardo Silva can play inside, outside. It just makes perfect sense. Um, I think we should blow our budget on these two. Um, as in for a horse in a while, I'd much rather have Bernardo Silva any day of the week. Um, and we definitely, 100% need a central defensive midfielder, even though we have Granit Xhaka. Yves Basuma is top of my radar list. But will we get a Basuma? I doubt it. His uh, Swedish teammate, Dennis Zacharias, Zacharia, something like that. He's a beast. He would be, an, I don't know why our, Jacques is not raving about him to us. He could be behind the scenes. And maybe he might think, shit, he might take my place. Um, I think he's valued around 30, 35 mil. Very affordable. We have Sambi. I'm Sambi Lukonga. Looks a fantastic prospect. And I think he's going to shock a few people this season. Um... Aaron Ramsdale, what can I say about this kid? He's not for me, he's not for Arsenal, he's not for the Arsenal fan base. But straight away, makes life difficult for the young lad. Look, I'm not for anyone for making anyone's life difficult. Especially when they got that red shirt on. But he is not good enough for our football club. But maybe he is nowadays, because we're a mid-table team. We're just slightly above the mid-table team, aren't we? So, I think if Arsenal can get in the top six this season, it will be not a miracle, but it's achievable. Remember, we only finished six points off Chelsea last season. They finished fourth. But I think Chelsea will rock to uh, uh, rectify them rights this season, and, and the gap will probably be much bigger this season. But then again, it might not be. I think a lot, a lot of this is where I think Arsenal might shock a few people this season because what a lot of that was down to the fans not being back in the stadium. But I think once that first goal goes in, even if it's of Bamiyang's bloody little toe, he's up and running. Uh, I don't think he'll stop. It just takes that one goal. We need to sell Lacazette. Otherwise, the guy's going to walk out on a £50 million pound transfer for free. Five years on or whatever it has been. It would have been. What a waste of money. What's Lacazette done for Arsenal? Lacazette done for Arsenal. He's done absolutely sod all. Scored around 10 to 15 goals a season. Just ridiculous. The next Ian Wright. I remember seeing some. Absolutely ridiculous. Say someone's the next Ian Wright after they've got the numbers Ian Wright used to get, yeah? I need a, I need a take on this one. I'm pissed off. Um, Edu, when you look at the business that PSG are bringing in on freeze. Donnarumma and players like that. And we're, we're looking at splashing at 30 mil on Aaron Ramsdale and they're bringing in on Donnarumma's in on free. Okay, he's Donnarumma, Euro champions to PSG. Possibly the favourites for the Champions League this season, especially if they get the signature of Lionel Messi. They'll definitely be the favourites. But come on, man. Come on. Maybe it's not Eddie Arteta uh, for the sack. Maybe it's Edu for the sack. Hmm. I'll tell you what. 
If they don't get Arsenal into the Europe this season, they will both get the chop. Stan Kroenke, it's time to get Mr. Ruthless. He's ruthless with his money. Why can't he be ruthless with his management? That aren't running his team properly. Oh, because he doesn't care. Yeah, oh, yes, he, oh, yes, he does care. Yes, he does care. Because it's his money at the end of the day. Yeah, and if he's having a dip extra into his pocket because we're not performing on the field, bringing home Champions League money, bringing home Europa League money, even bringing home extra money because you're finishing lower down the table, yeah, that all affects. Yeah, okay, next season we'll have 60,000 back in the stadium and that, but. And hopefully this will give players like Aubameyang the lift they need. The lift they need. Uh, Aubameyang's a performer. You know, you see the way he runs to the corner and does his flip. He's a performer, man, you know. I'm worried about Arsenal, but at the same time, I've been worried about him for years. Years and years, so it doesn't really surprise me. Um, God, just imagine being a Barcelona fan right now. Oh, my God. There must be a few chuckles going around Madrid right now. There must be. About the whole of Spain, actually. What is it they wanted? Seville? Someone else. Someone else. And Barcelona to pay Messi's wages or something like that. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. They wanted three or four different clubs to pay help pay Lionel Messi's wages. I don't know how true that is. If that's true, that's the absolute most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But um, so what? What I'm gonna uh, set up this week is Arsenal's fantasy football team. We're gonna have a uh, a team where we're gonna have our team that we've got. <laughs> I know, don't laugh. We are, and we're going to have the team that we, the signings we w wanted to bring in team. And they get their respective player ratings in the countries they're in. Okay? It, we, we, we can reach out. We can, we can, we can, <laughs> you know what I mean. We can, we can. Okay, yeah, it's not Premier League level. Some of them might be. Some of them might have been pinched. But anyway. Um, if Messi goes to... Um, PSG, I make, I, I make them Champions League favourites. I should have a doubt. I don't see anyone touching them, actually. That's why I think Guardiola ain't finished yet. He ain't finished yet, boy. If Pep's got any pulling power with 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 Mr. Mr. Messi, then um, we shall see. Anyway, uh, this has been Gunners TV talking about some of the things that's coming up. Um, I'm gonna have to take a look at the fixture list and what games I can to can get to and can't get to this season. Um, interview the fans after the game, before and after the game. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the new Robbie Lyle, by the way. I'm not the new AFTV. I'm not looking for loads of subscribers. I'm just a fan channel. I'm just somewhere to, to air and vent our views. Yeah. I just I just wanted to do something fun. And some of it's in there, it's in my heart, man. I love my football, I always have done what well, I have done for the past thirty years anyway. 
And um, I think it'd be fun. And um, where do you think Arsenal can finish this season? I, I personally think we're going to finish just in and around sixth. If we can get in, if we can sneak into a top five, that'd be great. But with the team, we like I said, we need some signings and we need them badly. So Edu, get the fuck off that jet ski. Get your fucking ass around Europe. Yeah, I think we should. I think one of our biggest signings of the season should be Leicester City's scouting squad. Because they seem to unearth gems from all over the shop, bruv. Yeah, on a, on, on, on a relatively shoestring buzzer, budget, even though the owners ain't skint. Yeah? So, I think, you know, I think we should make a move for Leicester City's scouting squad. Because ours is failing us miserably. Yeah, that... that. I don't know. I don't know how you could do that. Well, obviously, they have contracts just like players do. We could buy them out of their contracts. I don't see why not. You know, I think it's pretty pretty unheard of unless uh, the manager takes his backroom staff with him. And that. I don't know how their contracts work. You know, I'd have to look into that. But I think a, a, a team like Leicester, who might have won one Premier League and an FA Cup recently, last season to be a fact, and that is this week's big game, Leicester versus the champions, Man City, Leicester versus Man City. Look, mate, everyone's got a price in football. Everybody. So, let's see a picture of Europe behind us. Won't be doing no flying around there this year, guys. Not unless it's on holiday somewhere. Unfortunately, <laughs> certainly won't be doing no flying to see the Arsenal asset. That's for sure. Anyway, hit this hit this uh, video if you like. Hit and like, share, and of course, subscribe and hit that bell notification if you don't want to miss an up link. Um, it's a very young channel. I think I only had a 20 odd subscribers the last time I checked. It was 23 or 25, something like that. Uh, maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself with 25, we'll see. But um, scoffed at at the moment. He's always scoffed at um, new channels, uh, numbers of their subscribers. But, you know, if you say, ah, fuck, fuck this channel, and then check it in six months' time or a year's time, and they've got two and a half thousand subscribers, then they're not so much laughed at, are they? It takes time to build a fan base. Um... But you've got to put the effort in. You've got to put the mileage in, man. And I have the perfect tools. And I'm going to be buying a, a new camera. Um, and new equipment to interview people. Um, like I said, I sell a politics channel. And I lost all my equipment in Poland. I used to work for a Polish newspaper. Too much drink. Forget about it. Someone stole it. It was a Hugo Boss bag as well, which obviously attracted the wrong sort. Oh, man, they saw so much stuff. Laptops, microphones, clothes. Even my stone, stone island beanie, man. Fuckers. It cost me 90 quid a couple of days before. Anyway, fuck you, you thieving bastards. Buy your own next time. Anyway. Over and out.